Yo, I'm SickFishTicks and thanks for clicking on my video. New week and a handful of free games have been made available for your beautiful face to enjoy. Like Dying Light, which is a no-brainer and you should get it even if you don't intend on playing it right now. You can also get your hands on Mordor, a medieval chaotic 80 player melee fest where you will be teabagged by a guy playing sweet tunes on his loot. And last but not least, Elder Scrolls is also free to play for the next 10 days. If you want to get these free game update videos once a week and not have to do the research yourself, well then do yourself a favor and subscribe. Let's go. Let's start on Steam, where the heavy hitting free to play title this week is Elder Scrolls Online. It's free to play until April 16th. So it's just enough time to get you hooked before Bethesda pulls the rug and shoves a payment terminal in your face. I see what you're doing there Bethesda, I see what you're doing. Elder Scrolls Online tries to provide an experience of limitless adventure in a persistent Elder Scrolls world. You'll get to battle, craft, steal or explore and combine different types of equipment and abilities to create your very own playstyle. The best of all, there's no subscription required. If you're into MMORPGs and or Elder Scrolls, then it's definitely worth a try. It's sitting in with very positive reviews on Steam with a total of 100,000 reviews. So don't just take my word for it. By the way, just a quick heads up. According to our homie Katov here, the game gets boring around 10,000 hours or so. I wasn't able to verify that as of writing this review, but I'll get back to you sometime around 2034, give or take a few years. Next up we have Battlestar Galactic Deadlock. Here you'll take command of a colonial fleet in defense of the 12 colonies during the first Cylon War. You'll have the pleasure of leading a variety of different types of ships in this 3D tactical turn-based strategy game. It's probably one of the better space tactical games out there, an example of turn-based and real-time hybrid done right for once. But to be honest, I'm not sure if this is a game or just an interface to sell you DLC. I really hate this business model and I can't understand why it's still necessary in 2023. Anyway, the base game is free if you get your stinky fingers on it before April 9th. Battlestar Galactic Deadlock is sitting in with very positive reviews on Steam with a total of 2500 reviews. Next up we have Pustal Royale, where you get to shoo your way through multiple waves of brain dead NPCs, who are literally only programmed to run towards you while yelling random things recorded from a bathroom stall with a cheap USB microphone. You'll get to compare your high score with your friends if you have any of those and enjoy the beautiful assets that the developers bought rather than created themselves. And to be honest, Pustal Royale is without a shadow of a doubt one of the games in the Postal franchise. Next up we have House Flipper. I don't even know that there was a need for such a game, but it's a perfect way to spend the Easter holiday fixing up virtual houses instead of your own, I guess. The game is fairly self-explanatory, right? I mean, you flip houses and let your very own Home Depot dad out of the closet and put carpet in the kitchen and the garage and wherever else you feel fit. It's free to play for the next few days and it's sitting in with very positive reviews on Steam with a total of 65,000 reviews. Next up we have this figure prologue. This figure is a top-down shooter roguelite in which you fight countless grotesque creatures shredded in darkness. Choose from a variety of upgrades to create unique builds each run and survive, rinse and repeat. This figure prologue is a short introduction to the full game this figure. The gameplay element and what sets this bad boy apart from other games in the same genre is your ability to switch between circle and cone vision. One allows you to see all around you but not quite far, while the latter allows you to see far in one direction. A fun concept and I think there's enough in this prologue to allow your creativity to flow with different builds. While we're in this genre anyway, a quick shout out to Kagura Survivor's Endless Night, a roguelike based on the universe of Kagura games. The gameplay is quite similar to other roguelites of the survivor type, defeat enemies, gain experience, level up and thus acquire new weapons or improves the one you already obtained. There's also an element of improving your weapons by modifiers, which can be added to your weapons and abilities. It's also on Steam, it was released the 1st of April and is sitting in with mixed reviews with 392, so a bit of a rough start out the gates. A quick jump over to the Epic Store with some heavy hitting bad boys up for grabs this week. 
As I mentioned in my last video, you can still get your hands on Dying Light, which is free to claim on the Epic Store until April 13th. It's a first-person action survival game set in a post-apocalyptic open world overrun by flesh-hungry zombies and mother-in-laws. You get to roam a city devastated by a mysterious virus epidemic, scavenge for supplies, craft weapons and face hordes of infected zombies. This game really is just an intense version of The Floor is Lava. Dying Light has my world famous sick fish stick seal of approval and if you decide on getting one game featured in this video, this should be the bad boy you get. It seems Blazing Sails was replaced with Shapes which also free until April 13. Shapes is a relaxed game in which you have to build factories for the automated production of geometric shapes. As the level increases, the shapes become more and more complex and you have to spread out on the infinite map that you have available. Just as your butt cheeks are spreading out on the sofa you're on right now. From April 13th, Mortar will be free to claim. Mortar is a medieval first and third person multiplayer slasher. Enter a hectic battle of up to 80 players as a mercenary in a fictional but realistic world, where you'll get to experience brutal and satisfying melee combat. In my first playthrough, a guy took my sword that was stuck in him and proceeded to cut off my head. And then I got teabagged by a guy playing the loot. 10 out of 10, I still haven't recovered uh, psychologically. Also from the 13th of April, second extension, which has big maps, big dinosaurs and even bigger guns. Here you'll face an ever-changing threat level with your friends in this online co-op FPS with a bite. I guess it's a Left 4 Dead meets dinosaurs. I mean, you can shoot off giant lizard heads in this game, and what else do you need to be happy? Also, a quick shout out to Gravewood High, which is now free on the Epic Store, an infinitely replayable stealth horror game set in a high school. Well, because high schools wasn't terrible enough period in my life. Anyway, Gravewood High is filled with destructible environments, randomized level layouts and a smart opponent that develops new abilities the more you play. A quick jump over to Indie Gala that's giving you the Seeker, where you run, hide and hack in this indie top-down game. The Seeker is a science fiction stealth game in which you control a drone and must make your way through various levels of what looks like a deserted spaceship to somehow save humanity. How and from what, I have absolutely no idea. It's a little bit more difficult than it looks. Or at least it was for me, but that could be due to me repeatedly using my head as a hammer while I was growing up. Anyway, it's The Seeker, it's free to keep on Indie Gala, and remember links to all of the games that I featured in this video are in the description for you lazy buggers. And that's pretty much all I had for you in this one. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch my video. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't, like why not? We're almost at 2000, which is a juicy number. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.